Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. So today I want to talk about a fantastic alternative to resin that I've used in quite a few past videos and if you don't like working with resin or you've got any health concerns this alternative might be perfect for you. So I'm going to show you how to make a dupe pottery bowl without using any silicone molds. All you need is simple household objects you can find at home and a ceramic plaster. So I've also ordered some UV resin and a selection of three chrome marker pens in gold, bronze and silver, which I'll be using in an upcoming tutorial and some reels over on my Instagram page. So go check those out and follow me and subscribe to all my channels. So in this video, I'll be using Let's Resin's Magic Cure to make my bowls. This product is an amazing substitute for resin and gives really great results similar to pottery and ceramics. It's simple to use, making it great for beginners and experienced crafters. So one of the things that I love the most about this alternative is that it's quick drying. Within 30 minutes, you'll have a beautiful, durable result, just like resin and it's perfect for those of you who want to finish a project in a shorter time frame. So the kit comes complete with everything you'll need to start creating your ceramic style projects. Everything you'll need is in the kit except the water of course. So I'm not using any silicone molds today instead I'm using some plastic bowls that I've raided from a kitchen and I'll be using various size bowls to create my ceramic bowls. So this is a really cool method. It's easy to do and especially with Magic Cure as it just dries in half an hour. If you used cement, you'd have to wait like all night. So I really love this product for the time saved alone. So just a quick guide on using this casting powder. It's a three to one ratio. So that means three parts powder and one part water measured by weight on a scale. I use an electric scale for accuracy. And as for the curing time, it's just a mere 30 minutes and it's hardened. So what tools will you need to make this? You'll need an electric scale, a silicone spatula, and I'm using Let's Resin like bendable silicone cups to mix this in. This is really great for pouring with, it just makes it easier. And to make my life easier when it comes to measuring, because I'm not fab at maths, I've created this ratio chart and all it does is to help you work out the measurements in grams of both the powder and water. So all you need to do is select the total amount in grams that you'll need and the ratios are worked out for you. So I am offering this for free to all of my subscribers, full details in the description of this video. This is my little gift to you as my subscriber. So thank you to all for watching and the lovely comments you leave, really appreciated. So the process of mixing is simple. You weigh out the water in one cup and I'm using the chart to measure out the water. I'm going to weigh a total of 300 grams. So I'll need 75 grams in weight of water and 225 grams in weight of the powder. So I would suggest that you try to measure out as accurately as possible. But after some experience with this product, if you just need to add a little bit more water to the mix for a more fluid consistency, I'd suggest just adding a few more grams of water maximum. And um, it will need a few more minutes to cure if you do this method. But you can do that if you've got like a complicated mold and you want to make sure you have less air pockets stuck in the little corners. So I've measured out the water and the powder in two separate containers. And before I mix the two together, I am just going to prepare the plastic bowls for pouring. All I'm going to do is wipe the inside and the outside with some cooking oil. Any will do, sunflower, grapeseed, etc. This will just act like a mold release. So it helps and I wouldn't skip this step if I were you. I'm using some kitchen paper to wipe it on. Don't add too much, just a very thin layer. 
And now on to colouring the mix. You can use the following materials to tint the mix. You can use mica powder, that works very well. You can use acrylic paint and the kit is supplied with eight tubes of acrylic paint so that's handy. You can also use cement colouring that you buy in a DIY store although I find that there isn't much of a selection in colours so I just brought a black one and that will come in handy later on. And you can also use gouache paint since it's water based and I wouldn't use oil paints, they don't work and neither will chalk paints. These will just thicken the mixture and make it difficult to pour. So now it's time to mix the two parts together and at first I'm going to use the stir stick supplied in the kit and then I'm switching to my whisk and I really do love using the whisk. I never get any lumps this way. So I am going for a light marbling effect for these bowls. So I'm going to add a little acrylic paint first and then swipe it in gently. I'm not going to over mix. And of course, if you wanted a solid color, just add the tint of your choice and add as much in as you need until you get the depth of color that you like. But for these bowls, I'm looking for a neutral color that will match my decor style and that will go in any room regardless of the theme. So I'm going to add both acrylic paint and just a little cement colouring powder and I'm going to swirl it into the mix to create a marble effect. Then all you do is pour the mix into the larger of the oiled bowls. <laughs> Tongue twister there. That's simple and I'm going to hold a little back just in case it's too much. So then you just place the smaller oiled bowl and make sure you've oiled the outside of this bowl for mold release and then grab yourself something heavy. It took me a few tries to find the right weight that would stay in place. And then make sure you've just centered the smaller bowl into the bigger bowl so that the sides have the same thickness.
and then you can leave this to the side to cure. And since I have some left, I'm going to add a little bit more black to the remaining mix, just to darken it a little bit. And I'm going to ribbon it inside of a coast, coaster mold. And this mold is also provided in the Magic Cure Kit, along with two other really cool molds. And never waste any leftover mix. It makes excellent chips for terrazzo projects. And all you need to do is find some plastic or some baking paper and using a spatula, spread all the rest out thinly and let this cure. So to finish off the coaster, you only need to wait 15 minutes. So this way it's half cured and then you can add the top layer on and then leave this on for 30 minutes more to fully cure. So same method as before, measure out the powder and the water, mix the two together. And this one I will tint with some black acrylic paint in just a little darker shade than the insert. And once I've measured out the water and powder ratio, I mix the two, tint it darker grey, and then pour this on the top and let this cure for the full 30 minutes before unmoulding. Right, unmolding time. So the top of the bowl came off all on its own, thanks to the oil, and then the lower bowl, it just needed a little encouragement, not much, but just enough to release itself from the bowl intact with no breakages. And of course, this is hardened, but for a full cure, leave it overnight for all the water to completely evaporate and then it's rock solid. So I got a slight marbling effect and if you want any more, just add more coloring. But I really like the feathering effect. I find it very elegant and I will just have to lightly sand down the top of the bowl just to smooth it out make it nice and flat. So you can leave this here and just add some wax to protect it and make a candle bowl. That works very well but I'm going to turn this into a tower and to do this I made another bowl using the exact same method as before just using a smaller bowl, plastic bowl with a flat bottom and this will help when sticking the two together. So to do that, I am going to just sand the underneath of the round bowl with the selection of waterproof sanding paper, again, provided in the Magic Cure Kit. And these come with quite a few grits from abrasive to smooth, and you can use these with water. And this is great for dust-free sanding. I really love using these. Now, first I'm going to flatten the top of the bowl and smooth it down nicely. And then I'm going to turn it over and flatten the roundness of the underneath so it's a little easier to stick to the other ball. And to glue them together, I use an all-purpose acrylic mastic that comes in a tube that I buy from my hardware store. And now let's unmold the coaster we've made with the leftover mix. And I really love how this has turned out. The contrast between the light and the dark gray are just really fab. So I got a couple of holes on the side where I didn't tap the mold hard enough, but it's still a fun modern piece. I really love it. 
So just give it a good wipe with some water before you glue them together. And now it's time to decorate these and the choices are endless. And at the end of this video, I have more ideas to show you. But for this example, I'm just going to use some candles that I've made using Let's Resin's flower molds. And I will do a reel showing you how I make these. And I will link the molds in the description with a discount code if you want to buy these. And I love the variety of these flowers and they really, really burn well. Now on for some other suggestions. I have made another larger bowl with a strong marbling effect in beige tones. And you can also add a large candle surrounded by stones and decorate them with room diffusers made with a magic cure. So if you've ever seen any of my previous tutorials and reels over on Instagram and YouTube, you'd have seen how I make them. So this one is a beach theme with shells and some larger stones and it makes a really gorgeous table display and this sits on my kitchen island and I light the candle up every evening and spray the room diffusers. It's so relaxing and makes my kitchen smell gorgeous and gets rid of all of those cooking odors. I really love it. So for this one, I've made some beach themed room diffusers, again, using the magic paw. And I have also made some room flower diffusers. So just spread them around the candle and spray some room perfume on the top of them. Light the candle in the middle. This is so elegant. So whether it's the strong smell of resin that you don't like or the potential health hazards or simply your personal preference, this is an alternative and it's an excellent choice for your crafting needs. I highly recommend giving it a try. So links to all products used in this tutorial plus a 10% discount code when you buy from Amazon can be found in the description of this video. So I hope you've enjoyed this creative idea. It's really fun to do. And if you did like and comment on this video and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And I will see you all in my next tutorial. Bye.